I talk to a lot of people about creating great content all the time. And one of the most common questions that I hear is, should I create that as a page or a post on my website? And I'm gonna go ahead and give you the answer, or the short answer right up front. In general, it really doesn't matter. As long as it is rendered and Google can crawl the page properly and understand the information, Google doesn't have any preference over whether it's a page or a post. There's nothing to tell them this is a page or this is a post necessarily, and they're not gonna give more weight to one or the other in almost any scenario, especially not for photography websites. So in most cases, it doesn't really matter. It's generally a more personal preference for the way that you would like to organize your site. And the problem is there's no right or wrong way to organize your site and the content on your site. There are a lot of right ways to do this, so it really is going to depend on how you have it set up. However, I wanna get a little bit more into the nuance of the answer, and I'm gonna do this for three different platforms. First, for WordPress, second, for Squarespace, and third, for Show It, because each platform may have different things that you wanna think about whenever deciding between a page or a post. Now, I'll just tell you, my personal preference is that I generally create large content that's going to be uh, what I call cornerstone content as a page on my site. However, a lot of times my blog posts are also what I would consider to be cornerstone content. I generally like to keep fewer pages on my site. So like the really important stuff, the stuff I know is going to be uh, the main drivers of traffic, long guides and things like that, they're very frequently going to be pages whereas something a little bit shorter or just some information or more like article type content is likely to be a post. But that's really pretty arbitrary, right? So let's dig into each platform. So first of all, let's talk about WordPress. With WordPress, there are some default ways that things are set up, but pretty much anything can be changed, especially if you work with a developer or you install a plugin to help you change these things. Anything that can be true about a page could also be true about a post and vice versa, and the same applies to pretty much any post type. You can make these changes if you decide to. So what I'm gonna talk about are the defaults with WordPress. And the first consideration is if you have not changed your permalinks, the default setup does include dates in blog posts. All right, so that's just one thing to think about. Now, generally, I will change that right away whenever I set up a WordPress site and change my permalinks to post name. But let's just say it's default. That's one thing you want to consider. Uh, let's talk about the main differences by default with pages and posts in WordPress. So if you are building a page, you have some unique abilities. So for example, you can have a parent-child relationship between pages. You can nest pages under other pages. So this would apply to the URL if you wanted to make, let's say, mysite.com slash venue slash venue name. Uh, that could be done with pages, but it, by default, it's not able to be done with posts. Uh, the same thing is going to be true with posts. There are going to be some things that are very unique to posts. Uh, by default, you can have taxonomies with posts, which are not true of pages. You can have categories and tags. Those are the default taxonomies in WordPress. Uh, and then you have archives for these taxonomies, but you also, by default, have uh, taxonomy. I mean, I'm sorry, you have archives for your dates and for the authors. Those are all set up on WordPress uh, automatically by default. So there are a lot of these archives and I'm not really gonna get into all the details of the crawling benefits of having these archives for the most part. If your site is under a thousand pages, maybe even under 10,000 pages, and if you're submitting a sitemap, the benefits that would potentially come with something like um, an archive and the way that Google can crawl it more frequently and, and the way that they can find your posts and discoverability, it really just isn't going to apply to your site. So don't worry too much about that. If maybe you read an article that said something like that. Um, so that's, that, that's those are the main differences, the parent-child relationship and nesting, and then the taxonomies and archives that are default with posts. There are a few other little things like posts have comments enabled by default. Uh, but, you know, there's, like I said, a lot of things that can be applied to either. It really just depends on exactly what features you want, and you probably could enable that for whatever you want, and your theme may do some things differently with those 
So just know those are the main differences. Uh, also, obviously, it's different where you get to them. So like if you're going to uh, your WordPress admin, you have pages and you have posts and you could export those separately. Things like that are all uh, things to consider, but really it doesn't matter, especially with WordPress. Pages and posts are pretty much the same other than those uh, distinctions that I've already mentioned. All right, let's move on to Squarespace because Squarespace does have uh, some differences that you may want to think about with pages and posts. And the number one thing that I think about with Squarespace is that the posts are actually called items in a collection. And every one of the items is going to have the collection name in the slug or the URL. So it will be something like mysite.com slash blog slash post name. Uh, and again, by default, Squarespace has the dates inserted in the posts as well and not in the pages. Uh, you can change that, you can take the dates out, but you cannot take the collection name out of item URLs on Squarespace. And then the other thing is that uh, Squarespace makes it, it's a little confusing. This, the SEO settings for posts and pages are slightly different. They've improved it a bit lately, but you still don't have the option to no index a post, at least as of April of 2020. So uh, they may add that in the future, but right now those are really the only differences. I mean, again, things like, let's say you want to uh, insert a collection or a, a group of posts on another page, you could do that with posts and you could filter them by category or tag. Those kinds of organizational things and ways that you may wanna set up your site are going to matter. Whether it's a page or a post isn't going to matter necessarily to Google, um, so just kind of pick whatever makes sense for the way that you use your site. Again, with Squarespace, there's other considerations like, you know, if your template does something unique or maybe like pages automatically get added to the menu, they don't automatically, but you have to make them unlinked. It's just like all of those kinds of things. How do you want to organize your site? So yeah, hopefully this is making sense on when I say it's your personal preference. All right, finally, we're going to get into Show It and Show It does have some interesting differences between pages and posts. Um, again, theoretically, you could make them all the same. You can build everything with WordPress as long as you're on their uh, middle or highest package. If you're on their, um, their first tier, I guess, you don't have a blog. But if you have a WordPress blog attached to your Showit site, you could theoretically make everything in WordPress and just use the Showit as a show it platform as a builder for all of your posts and pages, and they can be WordPress posts and pages. The thing is most people don't use it that way. And so what that leads to is a little bit different handling of the head section of each of these. So um, in WordPress pages or posts on Show It, you're typically going to be able to use Yoast or uh, whatever SEO plugin. Like I said, it depends on your tier and what you can install, but most people are gonna be using Yoast. And with Yoast, you can control the title, the meta description, and Yoast allows you to submit a sitemap that is sitemap.xml. Um, and all of the stuff on the WordPress side will be included in that sitemap. And it's going to have open graph tags and all of the things that Yoast adds to the head. Plus any other plugins that you're using, maybe for schema or whatever else, will apply to the WordPress pages and posts on Showit. Now on the page side, the Showit page side, the things that you build with like app.showit.co, uh, those are not necessarily going to have all of those modifications that you may have made with plugins on the WordPress side. You're gonna have a different place to put your title and your meta description. There's some different things that you can't add universally across all of your pages. So let's say on WordPress, you wanted to add a plugin so that you could insert code into the head of all pages. It wouldn't apply to the Show It pages and Show It doesn't have the ability to insert code across all pages. You have to do it one at a time. Also, just in general, the way that most Show It templates are made, the, uh, the, the WordPress posts typically take the WordPress content area as one big section. And because most people are gonna be using either the classic editor or Gutenberg, the block editor, um, they'll create the content so that it's rather simple within that main section of the page which generally leads to it being a little bit easier for Google to crawl and understand. See, the problem is with a drag and drop builder, things can get really wacky really quick. The visual order might not be the same as the code order. You might have things hidden visually that 
Google is still crawling. There's a lot of weird things that can happen there and they're more likely to happen on show it pages. We've seen cases where we've taken something like a venue guide that was a show it page. We moved it with the same content to a show it post and we saw almost instant improvements in rankings. Now that won't always be the case. It's not strictly a page post issue. It's more of an issue of how the content is placed on the page and how the platform kind of handles building those two different types of pages. All right, I know some of this was a little bit more in depth and nuanced and there's a lot of random things that could happen. So if you have more questions or you have a different platform and you want to know, does a page or a post make any difference? I would love to hear what needs more clarification. So leave a comment on this video and I will try to answer as many as I can, but hopefully you understand now, it doesn't matter. Do what makes sense to you and the structure that you've planned for your site and Google will probably handle it just about the same. All right, until next time.